Good morning people, today I'm in Krakow, Poland and what a cool little city this is. Once the country's capital and now it remains as a European gem of a city. Today I'm going to be showing you the top 10 things to do and see in Krakow, Poland. So the first one, number one, is the town square of Krakow, the main square. Right behind me there, there's Cloth Hall, the most recognisable building in the whole of the city. You've got Adam's statue in the centre, right there, it's not a good view of that. You've got the statue right here and just behind it, those double towered building that is St Mary's Basilica. So this thing's absolutely huge, it's pretty empty too. So I've came in January, so it's pretty tourist free at the moment. I'm guessing it has something to do with the weather because it's, it is cold, really cold. But I've came first thing in the morning too, which is the best time to come in my opinion. You come in the afternoon and it's pretty heaving with people. But at the moment, there's barely anyone here apart from the odd passerby. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Humongous square, look at the size of it. But it's a great first destination to start off with in Krakow just to get used to the city. Krakow's main market square serves as the city's gravitational centre and is the natural start and finish point for any tour of the city. Measuring at 200 metres squared, the square ranks as one of the largest medieval squares in Europe and is surrounded by several other landmarks, all with their own unique names and histories. Taking centre stage is the Cloth Hall. Built in the 14th century, this huge hall was effectively the first shopping mall in the world. To this day, it's still crammed with merchant stalls selling amber, lace, woodwork and assorted touristy tat. Directly next to the hall stands the statue of Poland's most eminent scribe, Adam Mickiewicz. Across from the statue is St Mary's Basilica. The area surrounding the basilica was formerly a cemetery, and the bodies of hundreds of Krakowians still lie beneath the cobbles. Also, don't miss out on the famous bugle call played from the Tower of St Mary's every hour. On the hour. This is one of Krakow's most charming and famous traditions. So number two is the Krakow Barbican, which is just behind me here. It's quite large actually, I don't know if you can see the scale of it from here. I'll get a little closer in just a second but it's basically a circular fortification and it's one of the few standing left in Krakow. For a long time it had been the main and the strongest defensive construction in Europe, which had been the only entrance to the city during the wars, meaning you could enter the town only through the hoist bridge built across a 24 metre moat. Obviously there's not much defence going on in the city these days, so it's been turned into a museum and it runs exhibitions in the interior during the days. All the roads in Krakow lead to the Barbican. It's a powerful defensive construction which had been guarding the city against invasions of enemies from the ancient times. Wherever you go and whatever Krakow attraction you visit, you will come back to the Barbican every time. This is the way this unique city is designed. Don't ask me why, but I've just walked around the whole fortification and it's took me two minutes and 13 seconds. So, that's how big it is. Number three is the Ghetto Heroes Square. It does have another name which I'm, I can't even pronounce, so I'm going to put it down in the description below. But the Ghetto Heroes Square is essentially a memorial square full of about 70 different sized chairs and it's a memorial to remember those who once stood here waiting for the trains to board to the concentration camp but never returned. It's a part of Poland's history which shouldn't be forgotten about. Definitely a place worth visiting and checking out. The Ghetto Hero Square is one of the most significant places in the history of Krakow and the Jewish communities. Within the square there are 70 chairs made of cast iron and bronze. Each chair represents thousands of people and the possessions that they took with them to the ghetto and had to leave behind. As mentioned, it was created as a permanent memorial to the tragedy of the Polish Jews who were imprisoned and died either here or at the concentration camps. 
Number four is Oscar Schindler's Enamel Factory. Some of you may be familiar with this place, it's quite a famous one. But it's essentially a museum which portrays the monstrosities of war and its impact on the Polish citizens. It definitely deserves a big place on this list and it's certainly something you should see when you're in Krakow. If you are familiar with the film Schindler's List, this place will be very familiar to you. And a top tip, the museum is actually free on Mondays. But I think you have to book ahead in advance as I think it can get pretty popular. So, yeah, reserve a spot. Oscar Schindler was a German entrepreneur and a member of the Nazi party. He is credited with saving approximately 1,200 Jews by employing them in his factories so that they could avoid the horrible living conditions and eventually death in the Nazi labour camps. His story became well known to the public thanks to the popular Steven Spielberg movie, Schindler's List. Ever since then, his former factory has been crowded by tourists from all over the world. The easiest and the best way to visit would be to attend a guided tour, which is a good idea as you can be sure that you will not miss any important piece of information. If you want to visit on your own though, of course you can do that too. I'd recommend purchasing the Krakow City Card, allowing you to access a whopping 39 museums in Krakow. Number five, just behind me here, is the Krakus Mound. Look at the size of that. It's basically just a big hill. <laughs> and I know that sounds really boring, but it's meant to be the mythological resting place of the King Krakus. So there's a bit of superstition behind it too. But this isn't the only mound you'll find in Krakow. There's another mound on the west side of town, which is quite a distance away, especially on foot like myself. But if you have a car or you have any means of transport, I'd recommend traveling to the one further outside of town. I'll put the name of that one in the link in the description, as once again, I can't pronounce it. But keep in mind that one has an opening and a closing time as it's surrounded by a big wall. So you're kind of limited by the times you go to that one. But this one, it's in a park. Um, there's no barriers kind of letting you in or out, so you can go whatever time of the day. Personally, I think it'd be a great spot to go at sunset or even sunrise if you've got the energy for it. This is definitely one of the more interesting things in Krakow. Okay, maybe not interesting, but peculiar. It's, um, it's a bit of a, a weird landmark, a weird attraction to go to, but being how unique it is, I would recommend visiting here and just checking it out, especially for the stroll and the hike to the top. You can really see the scale of it when you're next to it. It's genuinely huge, it might take me a few minutes to get to the top. But the other one which I mentioned on the west side of town, that one has a big spiral staircase that gets you right to the top. And I think it's much higher than this one too. But still worth checking out. Look at this stunning view from the top. This is beautiful. If only the weather was much nicer too and you can see into the distance on the horizon, that'd be really nice, but it's still good, it's still good. And for number six, Krakow's very own Cat Cafe. When travelling, there's a very high chance that you'll need to stop for a snack and a spot of tea or coffee at some point on your journey. The Cat Cafe is a wonderful place where you can do just that, but with the twist of being surrounded by tons of curious cats. It's a must-see place for cat lovers. The cafe is home to many homeless cats, but you can also adopt them and give them a loving home too. If you are an animal lover or you just want to see how a cat cafe looks, don't hesitate to visit this cool place. Number seven is the Pinball Museum. And I know what you're thinking, Pinball Museum, really. But I promise you, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by this one, I think. Okay, I absolutely loved this place. What a genius idea this is. The place is more of an arcade bar than a museum. Despite the name, the Krakow Pinball Museum is home to an abundance of vintage and modern pinball machines and arcade games. Some over 40 years old. The nostalgic feels in here are on another level. You can play on over 90 different pinball machines and arcade classics, which are all in free play mode, all whilst enjoying a wild selection of beers, snacks and soft drinks. Honestly, this is such a unique and fun way to have a few drinks and unwind, either by yourself or with others. Okay, number eight is the Leaky Cauldron Bar. You can see it right behind me here. It's quite hidden. But once you find it, you're in for a treat. If you're a Harry Potter fan, you're gonna love this one. The Leaky Cauldron Coffee Shop can be a difficult spot to find and prides itself on its hidden location. Lucky for you, I'm gonna drop the location in the description below. You'll know you're in the right place when you spot the large carved owl. 
Muggles who get the Potter references can enter the hallway and head downstairs to an underground cave that's decked out with full Hogwarts vibes. With the menu modelled after a spellbook and the soundtrack of Harry Potter playing in the background, a roaring fire, more references than I could count, and brimming mugs of butterbeer, it's pretty much guaranteed to give you all the feels. Harry Potter fan or not, it's such a wonderful and unique place to visit. And for number 9 we have the Varvel Royal Castle. You'll have no problem finding this as it overlooks the whole city of Krakow. All you have to do is look up and into the distance and you'll no doubt find it. In my opinion as well, it's more beautiful if you come on the evening. As you can see it's lit up and it looks absolutely stunning. The Vavil Royal Castle is the mecca of every Pole, a must for foreign tourists and of huge importance for Polish history and culture. Home of three dynasties of Poland's monarchs, what began as a small stone building would later become this majestic Gothic castle. If you are passionate about history or not, the Varvel Castle should be a must-see during your visit to Krakow. Many of the exhibits and attractions at Varvel Castle can be done individually or with a guide. But with the more detailed tours, you will need an admission ticket to take part, but rest assured the tickets are surprisingly cheap. As I mentioned before, purchasing the Krakow City Card entitles you to many of these exhibits. I'd recommend buying this card on your trip to Krakow. Number 10, last but not least, is the Museum of Illusions. If you've seen my Slovenia video, you will see that there's a Museum of Illusions in the list too, but I couldn't help myself, I've had to include it in the Krakow one too. It really is worth seeing, I would recommend you go to this one. Who said that museums can't be fun? I've been to several illusion museums now, and even in Krakow, I'm not disappointed. That is why I believe it deserves a place on the list. The Museum of Illusions is a space where illusions meet scientific inventions. Physics and optics are displayed together with mysterious artwork and classical riddles to create amazing mind-boggling entertainment. I always find these places an amazing way to spend a few hours and each one I visit is vastly different from the last. When you think of big European cities that people tend to visit, you get familiar with the names that come up. Barcelona, Amsterdam, Berlin and Paris. But Krakow, Poland's second city and former capital, barely gets a mention. As you've seen, Krakow is an underrated gem, but nothing stays hidden forever, and it won't be long before the word spread and people discover the wonders of Krakow. It's a city with a rich and dark past, but its head is firmly turned towards the future. The incredible cuisine, trendy bars and hip coffee shops have really put Krakow on the map bringing more and more people to its cobbled streets. The icing on top of the cake has to be the prices in Krakow. Everything here is considerably cheaper than other Western European cities, leaving you no excuse not to visit here and indulge on all what the city has to offer. Okay, that concludes another top 10 video on things to do and see in Krakow, Poland. As always, I hope this has inspired some of you to make the journey out here because as you've seen, there's an abundance of things to do here for a fraction of the costs. It really is a great place to visit, especially if you're on a budget too. I think this is going to go down as one of my favourite cities in Europe. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell if you would like to be notified of more of my upcoming videos and adventures. It would also mean the world to me if you could leave a thumbs up and a comment down below of what you thought of this amazing place. I shall see you all in the next video.